Good morning, everyone, and welcome, morning. To, welcome to St. Albans on Remembrance Sunday, but also the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. It's the last Sunday in Ordinary Time because next week we have Feast of Christ the King. Uh, I say thank you to Bryce for taking my suggestion of having Jerusalem for our first hymn. So let's gather our thoughts and our minds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. How often have I longed to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, says the Lord. But you would not come to me. Let us, as wayward children, return to God and confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full of lasting happiness to serve you with constancy, the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 12. At that time, Michael will stand up, the great prince who mounts guard over your people. There is going to be a time of great distress, unparalleled since nations first came into existence. When that time comes, your own people will be spared, all those whose names are found written in the book. Of those who lie sleeping in the dust of the earth, many will awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting disgrace. The learned will shine as brightly as the vault of heaven, and those who have instructed many in virtues as bright as stars for all eternity. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. All the priests stand at their duties every day, offering over and over again the same sacrifices, which are quite incapable of taking sins away. He, on the other hand, 
has offered one single sacrifice for sins and then taken his place forever at the right hand of God, where he is now waiting until his enemies are made into a footstool for him. By virtue of that one single offering, he has achieved the eternal perfection of all whom he is sanctifying. When all sins have been forgiven, there can be no more sin offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after the time of distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will lose its brightness, the stars will come falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then, too, he will send the angels to gather his chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the world to the ends of heaven. Take the fig tree as a parable. As soon as its twigs grow supple and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. So with you, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the very gates. I tell you solemnly, before this generation has passed away, all these things will have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But as for that day or hour, nobody knows it, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, no one but the Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look out at the world today and it's not a place of hope. Look at COP28 summit that finished just recently and it's probably come up with what one might expect but it's certainly not come up with what is needed. And then, I think when it comes to remembrance this year, we can't but keep in mind what's gone on in Afghanistan. That with the withdrawal of Western forces, including our, our own armed forces, and the, the rapid taking over by, of the country by the Taliban has, I think for veterans, particularly veterans of Afghanistan, 
made this Sunday a very difficult one because uh, it's made them question what really was the value of what we did and what was the value of the lives that were lost. I don't know that I can give you answers for that. I guess at each moment in time, all we can do is what we think is best. It's hard to know, isn't it, the fig tree? What, what are the signs of our, what are the signs that are present in our times showing us? I'm not really sure. But I think at this point where coronavirus looks as if it's going to be still a problem for well into next year at least, when we think about what I said about Afghanistan and when we look at COP39, all we can do is to put our faith in God and for each of us to try to do what we believe God is asking us to do at this time. We don't know the day or the hour of our own end or the end of the world. Neither the angels of heaven know that, nor the Son, but only the Father. But by each moment of each day trying to do what we feel God is asking us to do, is the best and the only thing that we can do to be ready. One of the meditations I read as part of my morning prayer, uh, that comes around every month, has words to the effect of, you might not know whether we're actually doing what God wants us to do, but we have to believe that the desire to do God's will is something that God accepts and values. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At the end of time, God will send his angels to gather his chosen ones into his kingdom. 
as we pray for all human need, so we ask that we may be found worthy on that unknown day. Let us pray for the leaders of the church, that they may always preach the good news of Jesus' gospel of peace. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis, Bartholomew the Ecumenical Patriarch, and the leaders of all Christian churches. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In Birmingham, we pray for all the Remembrance Day commemorations in the diocese, that they may be worthy occasions to commemorate the contribution of civilians and servicemen and women from the city in the two world wars and later conflicts. In our deanery, we pray for the parish of St. Andrew, Hansworth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for Father Jerry and his family, our parish and congregation. We bring before God the staff, students and governors at St. Albans Academy and Stanhope Wellbeing Hub. We pray for the people of Highgate Baptist Church, St Anne's Roman Catholic Church, the Shear Mosque in Clifton Road, Birmingham Central Mosque, the Bahu Trust, and Birmingham Central Synagogue. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership political, military, and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. We pray especially at this time for the people of Afghanistan. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, and for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering families, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for all civilians whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for the health and well-being of our nation during the continuing pandemic, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Now let us pray for those who love in death as in life, those who have fallen as a result of war. We pray for all those in any kind of trouble, the sick, those who mourn, prisoners, and all who need God's healing touch in their lives. We remember all those for whom our prayers have been asked. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for servicemen and women and civilians who have died in the violence of war, especially for those from this parish and those known to us, each one remembered by and known to God. We pray especially for all who have died recently, those who have died as a result of COVID-19, and those who have died suddenly, unprepared or alone. We remember by name amongst those whose years mind occurs at this time, Mary Goodman Senior, Phoebe Lee, Herbert Brooks, Ray Cook, George Cowdery, <coughs> Alice Spall, and Peter Baird. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. And the souls of all the faithful departed, rest in peace and rise in glory. We offer these prayers with those of all the saints and with Mary, Mother of our Lord, Queen of Peace and Comforter of the Afflicted. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace the Lord, the Lord is, is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and this is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Let us bring to mind our own needs and intentions in a time of silence. God our Father, you know the day and the hour when this world will come to an end. We offer these prayers so we place ourselves in your provident care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Bless to you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It shall become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy Son. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty we may you may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, we look for the coming, for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of our Lady, St. Albans, St. Patrick, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the <coughs> unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the power and the glory are yours forever. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a wave of peace. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus who was wounded for our sins, that you may bear in your life the love, the joy, and the peace which are marks of Jesus in his disciples. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. Frank Adams, Benjamin Bartlett, Henry Cummings, Alfred Davis, Harry Dawson, Evelyn Dixon, Cyril Gould, Leslie Haig, Fred Hansen, Horace Kirkham, Richard Lander, Arthur McKay, Ernest Owen, Percival Pountney, Frederick Prince, Chandos Prin, Herbert Rod, Arthur Sharath, Ernest Streeter, Alan Taylor, Richard Tennant, Alexander Terry, Arthur Wright, Leslie Ng, Frederick Glass, Stanley Hart, Bert Osborne, Arthur Howells, Frank Rees, sorry, Ralph Rees, Frank Thomas, Horace Ward, Ernest Webb, George Wilson, Harry Yates. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. It shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun in, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
Almighty and eternal God, from whose loving Christ we cannot be parted, neither by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all who remember this day, fulfill in them the purpose of thy love and bring us all with them to thine eternal glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 